Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. So Juno is out. I had a few days to play with the full release candidate, so here is my complete video review of Elementary OS 5.0 Juno. The basics. You might already know this, but let's recap. Elementary OS Juno is the fifth release of Elementary OS, hence the 5.0 version number. It skipped from 0.4.1 Loki to 5.0 to convey a sense of maturity and being ready for production, which Loki already was, to be fair. Juno is the result of two years of development, being based on Ubuntu LTS 18.04, when Loki was based on Ubuntu 16.04, the previous LTS version. It adds a ton of improvements, graphical changes and bug fixes, and builds on the stable foundation of Ubuntu LTS. It ships with the Linux kernel 4.15, which brings improved performance and hardware support, as always. The installation still requires you to fully reinstall and offers no in-place upgrade, unfortunately. Performance I installed the distro on a fresh partition on my system, replacing Elementary OS 0.4 low-key completely. I ran it on a Core i5-7300HQ with 8 gigabits of RAM, a GDX 1050 Ti and an SSD. A modern system, but definitely not top of the line. Performance in Juno is pretty good, on par with Loki. On my system, it uses about 1 GB of RAM when idle, which is definitely not lightweight, but on modern systems, it's not really an issue. CPU consumption seems down from Loki on my hardware. Installation was quick, as always, using the older Loki installer. A new one is in the works and is deployed on System 76's Pop OS, but it was not tuned for Elementary OS yet, so it has been left out of that release. Opening and closing applications is snappy, and the main menu is now faster, opening and closing with a subtle animation that stuttered before on Loki on my laptop. All in all, I can say Juno won't tax your system more than Loki. Now let's move on to the new features. The desktop. The elementary desktop has received a ton of improvements. First, in the window management department. Window tiling is now greatly enhanced. You'll get an overlay telling you where your window will snap to when you drag it to a side or to the top of the screen. But that's not all. When you snap a window to a side, you can now resize it easily to take up more screen real estate. When you then drag another window to the opposite side of the screen, it will fill up only the space left. And if you resize one of the windows, the other one will also resize automatically to avoid any overlap. This is really handy and a very welcome improvement. You also get a picture-in-picture -picture mode. When playing a video, press Super plus F to make a selection cursor pop up. Select the window or part of your screen you want to keep in focus, and it will put that area or that window in a little always-on-top frame that you can move or resize and stay across workspaces. You can close it easily by clicking the little X on top. The downside is that if you select a portion of the screen, when you minimize the window that's playing the video, for example, or move it, the picture-in-picture -picture window will not adjust, so you won't see anything anymore. Remember to keep the window open for it to work. The desktop environment also has received a few updates. First, the Applications menu now sports a little search icon next to the Applications label. A tooltip on Hover will also show you the keyboard shortcut associated with the menu. The Apps menu handles scrolling with the trackpad better, now swiping one app page at a time when it was jumping all over the place before. The main top panel now handles your wallpaper better, becoming translucent depending on what color and luminosity your wallpaper is. Icons on the panel now have smooth animations to transition from a state to another, such as a ringing of the notification bell when you receive a notification, or a smooth fade when disabling one of these indicators, for example, by middle mouse clicking on them. The power indicator now reflects better the total percentage of battery left if your device has multiple batteries, and the time indicator is now more clear on which day it is compared to which day you selected in the popover menu. The system menu indicator now sports a link to the user account settings for quicker access, and clicking on the speaker icon in sound indicator now mutes that audio channel. Performance has also been greatly improved on all indicators, especially for systems using standard hard drive disks. Nightlight is a new feature as well, allowing you to reduce the amount of blue light your screen emits to reduce eye strain. You can enable it manually in the settings or set it automatically for a specific time period. It would also appear in the notification area of the top panel for quick access. A new shortcut overlay has been added, which you can invoke by pressing the Super key. This is a weird default key to set it on, but it's a handy feature to see at a glance how to quickly accomplish a specific action. You can remap that shortcut in the System Settings in the Layout tab of the Keyboard Settings. You can basically now remap the Application menu to use the Super key instead of the Super plus Space shortcut. The Screenshot tool has also been given some attention. It is now using the Light style instead of the Dark theme, and is now much more legible, with simple icons instead of text. It now remembers the last setting you used as well. Once your screenshot is grabbed, the display scaling factor is added to the file name to make it easier for other apps to display and use it at its correct size. 
Finally, emoji have been added, with the help of the Nodo Color Emoji font. You can invoke the emoji picker in any native text field with the shortcut Ctrl plus semicolon, and select which emoji you want to add. Look and feel. Juno has been overhauled with subtle touches to its look and feel. At a glance, these changes might not be very noticeable, but if you've been using Loki regularly, you'll quickly pick up on them. First, the icons. They have been tweaked to use a more vibrant, more colorful palette. The first most noticeable change is the folders in Files. They now sport a manila folder look instead of the blue theme of Loki. I am not a fan of this change, but it will allow developers to implement a few features such as selecting a color for each folder in the future. Over 1000 icons have received some color enhancements. The App Center icon, for example, now uses a much more vivid purple. The file types icons also have been made more consistent, with symbols encased in a white sheet of paper that will scale better with each icon size. A new color palette has been used to tweak all these icons, and it is available by default as a color palette in GIMP, for example. The system theme has also been touched and refined. The dark mode has been improved for more legibility, notably with sliders and checkmark icons that are just a little easier to make out on the dark background. Icons also have been added to the info bars in applications. New styles have been added to code and terminal, for example, allowing you to choose a color contrast that suits you. And on these apps, tabs have been made aware of that color so that it looks more consistent. Juno comes with a set of new wallpapers, and as always, they are beautiful. I never felt the need to go look for my own backgrounds while using Loki, and that's still the case here on Juno. One new feature that also helps legibility has been added as well. Small programs that didn't use a complete window, such as Nimbus or other applet-style apps, are now revealed when you open them and the window is covering them. A nice little animation will show you that the app has indeed been opened in the background. This is a nice touch. Finally, when scrolling up or down, a little color halo will appear when you reach the end of the scrolling area, just as in Android, for example, to tell you that there is no more content to scroll towards. This will pick up the accent color of the app, and it is blue by default. Finally, the sound design has also been changed. A new sound theme is now default on Juno, with a small ding for notifications, and a thud, indicating that you can do the requested action, such as trying to delete text in an already empty text field. Now let's move on to the applications. App Center. The App Center has been improved as well. It is still the one-stop shop for downloading applications, whether they are specific elementary apps or non-curated regular Linux applications. The first area of focus has been on how to reward developers for their work. You can still download paid apps for free by typing zero in the amount field, but these apps will now be left out of the update all button when updating the system. You'll have to update them individually to remind you that these have a price and incite you to give back to the developer. If you've paid for a paid for app, it will update automatically as before in Loki. You now also have a font button in each app's listing, allowing you to contribute to an app you would already have paid for, for example, to encourage the developer to keep updating it and refining it. The payment dialog has also seen some improvements with a clearer icon and a better card number formatting. The CVC field is also now hidden when the payment window is not in focus. App Center also shows the total size of an app in its listing to let you know how much of bandwidth code it might use. Apps that contain explicit content are now marked as such, and icons are now higher resolution and support high DPI as well. The App Center sadly still does not support Flatpak or Snap packages. The developers have clearly stated that they'd rather support their own ecosystem than adding untrusted software sources to the App Center, such as FlatHub or the Snap Store, which I can understand, but having an easy way to enable it with a security warning would still have been nice. Photos and Music Photos now sports a dark theme to really make your pictures shine. A lot of bugs have been fixed on this new version, and the sliders have been adjusted to make use of color. For example, the temperature slider now lets you know which color temperature you'll be moving towards. Music has seen a lot of love, with the streamlined interface more coherent with the rest of the system. When opening an album, a nice sidebar will show up, listing all songs and ratings. Album art is now picked up from the images in each album's folder as well. Stability and performance also have been improved. Files and Terminal Files now sports the new manila colored folders. It also automatically adds a slash symbol at the end of the file path in the address bar, and folders you already have opened in another tab will now use an open folder icon to let you know that they are open. Files supports high DPI as well, and has seen a lot of code cleanup to use more standard system libraries. Selected items in files will also show a nice gray background to make it easier to see which folder or file is currently selected. The terminal is still one of the most beautiful app of its kind. It now allows you to choose between three color schemes, high contrast, solarized light, and solarized dark. 
There is also a new font size adjustment selection to make the text more legible. A show in file browser shortcut now allows you to open the directory in which you're working, and icons have been added to the tabs to show the success or error of each process. Elementary code, or Scratch as it was known in Loki, has been transformed into a complete IDE. A new status area has been added to the header bar to play with tab and space settings, the syntax highlighting, as well as a go to line feature. Code now supports the three same themes as the terminal, with tabs adapting to match. Plugins have been deduplicated and rewritten, and the folder view plugin is now enabled by default. Some quick shortcuts have been added to toggle comments with Ctrl plus slash or Ctrl plus M, and line sorting is available with the press of F5. More languages are now supported by default for syntax highlighting as well. An open in menu can now be found by right clicking a file to choose to open this file in another app or another tab, and the sidebar can be toggled on or off with F9. Code has an all-new Git integration with indicator icons to let you know which files have changed or are not committed yet, and spaces for selected text and trailing white space are now drawn by default. Scratch was a powerful text editor, but in Juno it has been transformed into a complete development package that should really be useful for those coding on elementary OS. You can feel the developers wanted to have a purpose-built tool for their own development work, and code delivers. Camera and Epiphany Camera is probably not the most used app on elementary OS, but it also has received a few improvements, such as clearer controls and a new timer with 3, 5 or 10 second options to help you get ready for that picture. Epiphany is still based on WebKit, with support for modern standards. Its rendering has been improved and its performance is now a little better. The user interface has received a few changes here and there, with new bookmark management, zoom and search buttons in the system menu, and sound icons on tabs which are playing audio. Epiphany also has a new download manager that appears in a popover menu. The best new feature in my opinion in Epiphany is Firefox account sync support. You can now sync your bookmarks, open tabs, passwords and a history with your Firefox account and any other of your devices running Firefox. Epiphany will definitely be my default browser on Juno since it now supports adblock and syncing, which is all I need from a browser at the moment. System settings. A lot of the system settings panels have been tweaked and enhanced as well. First, the wallpaper settings now import images you have selected to be your wallpapers, so even if the file is moved or deleted, you can still set it as your wallpaper afterwards. You can also remove any of your wallpapers by right-clicking on it without deleting the original file. This will fix a lot of complaints I had with the wallpaper management in Loki. The printer settings have been revamped to be more consistent with other settings panels. Unfortunately, I don't own a printer, so here is a screenshot of that setting. The Bluetooth panel is now more legible and easy to use with device discovery, pairing and management from the same panel. If you open the Bluetooth panel, your device automatically becomes discoverable and returns to its masked state when the panel is closed. The bug reporting tool has also been enhanced with clearer selection of where you could assign the bug. The right Git repo will open for you to report your issue in once you've selected a category or application. The language and region panel now adds a link to the keyboard settings for quicker access. That panel has been enhanced as well, with the possibility to remap the super key to open the app menu, display the keyboard shortcut overlay, or do nothing. The compose key can now be set to caps lock, menu, right alt, right control, or right super, to enable easier typing of Latin or special characters. You can also get previews of keyboard layouts to make sure that you are selecting the right one for your keyboard. Finally, the keyboard shortcuts panel has been made clearer with icons for categories, and more shortcuts are customizable by default. The mouse and touchpad settings also have been revamped, with a new option to enable or disable middle mouse click, or enable disable the touchpad while typing. Mouse acceleration profiles are now selectable from hardware default, no acceleration, or adaptive acceleration. The sound input output panel has also been completely redesigned, with easier selection of the devices and balance adjustment. You can now disable the even sound as well, allowing you to remove that thud sound when you're doing something that is not allowed. The user account settings have been tweaked to make it easier to change your password and user creation now displays password security levels. Finally, the security and privacy panel has received a lot of love. You now get a new housekeeping tab to automatically clear unused cache and temporary files, and you can select the number of days before trashed items and temp files will be deleted. Apps trying to access your location will now show a dialog to let you accept or decline said access. So a new tab called Location Services has been added letting you manage permissions for each app or disable location entirely. Other changes. 
Juno has a lot more other minor changes that I can't cover here, since this review is already starting to get a bit too long. To conclude this review, I have to say the changelog is impressive. While on the surface, elementary OS Juno behaves and feels like Loki, Juno really makes day-to-day -day use a lot easier. The new color palette refreshes the style with subtle touches, and all standard apps are now more useful and stable. Epiphanino has the capacity to be the default browser, and code is a real boon for developers looking for a powerful IDE. The new settings allow you to get just a little more customization, and they fix a lot of complaints I've had with wallpapers and other settings. For users with a high DPI screen, Juno is a must-have upgrade as well. So, should you upgrade? Well, if you're on Loki, definitely. This new version of Elementary OS refines the experience and adds so much that it would be a shame to miss on. If you're using another distro or desktop environment, and you didn't like Pantheon and Elementary OS before, Juno won't change your mind. The philosophy of minimalism and simplicity is still the backbone of the experience. Whatever your preferences, Elementary OS Juno is a great release, packed full of new features and improvements. Congratulations to the team for their hard work, and I'm looking forward to another two-year cycle of improvements and new features for my system of choice. You can download Juno from the Elementary OS website, I'll leave a link in the description of the video, as well as the link to the Medium blog post that recaps all changes. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, please let me know in the comments if I've forgotten something, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!